Seems like it's sparse out there this morning. You know, so thank you for braving the weather. I'm sorry we were late, but we snow blowed for two hours I live in the country. In any case, um, just a little history. The Moline Church was started in the mid-50s and went many years without elders. And then there were elders for several years, and then because they moved and different things, went through a period of no elders. I think up until about five years ago, there'd been 10 years with no elders, something such as that, even though it was a 50-year-old church. So we were blessed to be able to have elders at that time. The church was being run by leaders or, quote, the steering committee, unquote, that kind of, which is not unbiblical, but it's not the sign of a mature church in any way to have a church that's run by leaders. If you look at 1 Thessalonians, he calls um, the fifth chapter, he tells them to obey their leaders. It's a new church, so they don't have elders yet. But when he and Barnabas are done with their uh, second trip, missionary trip, and decide they're going to done with the first one and uh, decided to go out for their second one. They decided they were going to do that and appoint elders in every city. And that's probably within one to three years. So people who were brand new Christians, one to three years, but they were so involved with the work of the church, many of them may have been elders in the Jewish synagogues and converted over. In fact, that probably is the case. All right, so that's, a mature church has elders. We've had them for about, we, the three of us have been the elders for about five years. There's been things happening in our own lives that have made it where the, we need help. I think I said that at the men's meeting a month ago that we need help. And fortunately there's several of you in the congregation who are ones who could help us. And the um, person that we would like to submit to the congregation's thought of this, because we find that he does meet those qualifications that Lance outlined today, this checklist or qualifications or character, is Blake Adams. So Blake, would you want to come up here for We've talked with Blake um, to invite him in, and some of you know that we've invited some of the rest of you, but you've held off, at least at this time, being willing to make the commitment, because it is a fairly significant commitment to be an elder. Um, one that we take gladly, I can tell you that I've grown in as an elder, as a person, as a Christian, since I've taken on this task, just as Gladys told me five years ago that I would, it has happened that way. Um, in any case, um, we asked Blake if he would uh, join us, and he said that he would join us. So the time schedule that we would submit to the church is that the, for the next two weeks, you please pray about it. And if there's anyone who has a scriptural objection, I'm uh, putting, emphasizing that word scriptural. So let's say... Uh, you don't like the fact that his wife brought pumpkin pie to one of the stuff? No. Some, something that where it's just a personality or chemistry issue. A personality chemistry issue. That doesn't meet the muster of a scriptural objection. Um, Blake has told us that he wants this period of examination. Quite frankly, we had almost decided to forego it. But I think he's wiser into putting that period out there to all of us to go through that period of examination um, so that he knows that everyone here has been able to speak their mind during this time. So why don't we go to God in prayer and we'll ask that the um, back break if you want to leave us this morning. Okay. Our great Father, we thank you so much for this day and for spirit that you pour out upon this group of people here in Moline. Father, we ask that you, you guide us in this very important period of examination and decision making. Father, we ask that you continue to bless our people here, that you guide us so that we can continue 
forward and doing your will. Father, we ask that you open the hearts of every one of us to look at what your will is and, and to make, make a decision that best follows that will and, and will help keep our family here moving forward and, and our ministry to others and our spreading of the good news of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I want to mention a word of prayer and the direction in which Blake has already stated this, but we truly want our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, in our, on our team and making this selection. We think that we have picked a real good person. Uh, we wouldn't have uh, made this decision. And would you bow with me just for a minute and pray. Father, we praise you and thank you so much for Blake and for the foresight to, for us to see that we need him on our team, on the Lord's team, on your team, and in the kingdom. And we thank you. Thank you so much for this. And again, we ask you for your guidance for us to be able to do this. And the plans are for us to get other people involved also. And we ask you to examine our people's minds and the men uh, uh, ex to accept this, the duties of elders and for us to be able to get more involved and to uh, make good decisions and serve your kingdom, Father. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Just to outline the process, um, two weeks from today, which would be January 19th, that would be when Blake is formally installed. During that time, you can give a verbal or we prefer written. Um, you don't necessarily have to, we are not going to, it would be kept in confidence. If it's a true scriptural objection, then we would take it to Blake so you wouldn't have to worry about that that relationship in any way um, being hurt. Um, but we would, um, so two weeks, and then we will um, install him on January 19th. Brian, you had a question? Yeah, that's, that, we left that out. But that's what the procedure is. If you've got questions, we'll be around here today for you to ask any questions that you have. I'm sure Blake would answer questions for a while if you needed that, too. Let's do a final prayer, and we'll just, unless there's a final song. Let's have a final prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your church. Jesus died for it, and he is the great one, the main reason for the universe, architect of the universe, maker of all things. Father, we ask you to help us to grow to be like him, as we say. Father, we also ask that in the hierarchy of the church that we represent that hierarchy in heaven that is in perfect harmony. In our lives this week, Father, we ask that we praise you every day. Give us that spirit and that willingness. Help us to exalt our own minds as we exalt you. Father, we ask this in every way that you guard us from sin. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.